we'll open it up for questions. Yeah. Uh, first, first of all, um, you know, to finish off non-conference play um, in that type of crowd was really, really nice to see uh, fans that kind of came out. Uh, you know, be able to put that type of attendance in there for us tonight, I thought was really special. Hopefully, you know, as we get into early January and our students are back, we can continue to have that. It's really important as we get into the Big Ten. We played well tonight, we shared the ball. Uh, we were much better in terms of moving the ball, and I thought our guys did a decent job of playing together. You know, defensively, we grinded pretty good for about 30 minutes, and then obviously we took the, took the foot off the pedal, which was a little disappointing, but it's hard to complain when you have a lot of different guys in there contributing and also being down two guys to play an important role on our team. So we feel good about the win. Our non-conference resume is done. Uh, we've gotten through it, a lot of ups and downs, and now as we press forward here after break, we'll uh, get ready for the Big Ten gauntlet, so to speak. First question for Coach. I guess, to what degree did you want guys or at least Juwan focusing on his triple double there toward the end, as opposed to just letting it come to him. I guess um, I didn't realize it until we uh, we had the media where he was two points away. So we drew up a play on underneath out of bounds to get him a basket, make sure he got it. Guys were definitely going to try and get him get him the deal. I mean, I think that's an incredible accomplishment to to do that. Um, you know, in Indiana, with so few people have done it, um, and you have to be an unbelievable complete guy. Uh, to be able to be that type of efficiency. He took five shots in a game, you know what I mean? And you know, you can tell he completely dominated uh, with his unselfish play. So it was good for him um, to be able to play the way he did tonight. He made us better. Mike? For a guy like that to have 10 assists, I mean, how much have you maybe seen him grow as a passer, you know, year, year and a half here? Uh, I mean, you know, he's, he's got confidence in his perimeter game right now, more so than anything, you know, handling the ball on the open floor. Um, he's looking for people. He, he hunts to get guys shots. He's terrific out of the post. Right now he's really finding guys out of the post, whether that's the cutter or the shooter. And, and just in general here tonight, you know, when you put him against the zone, then he's really dangerous because he can operate in the high post or low post. And uh, to be able to deal with that type of zone, playing through the middle, he again picked, picked it, sort of picked it apart working the back line and whatnot. So, you know, he had all three levels going. He had a transition deal head up. And, uh, playing in the post, he created a lot of offense for a lot of different guys. And then once we got into the zone, I thought he was an important piece to cut it up. Coach, 25 turn or uh, assists in the last game. Assists in the last game. 21 <laughs> in this game. Uh, the ball movement was very, very good and crisp tonight. Only five first half turnovers. Is there a correlation between better ball movement and less? We just turnovers? spent a lot of time watching film of Central Arkansas's first four to eight minutes. We spent a lot of time in practice really talking about you know, just being sharper with the catches, pass faking, being more fundamental with things. We still had some one one arm singers that come flying, you know, whether that's out of the post or whatever. We gotta I'm trying to tone that down. I just think we have to be more fundamental. I mean, we really do. We have to take less chances, less one hand passes and whatnot. And, I thought for the most part tonight we were pretty pretty secure in our ball security and and again other guys made the right reads. There was a lot of good passes out there. Um, they got guys good shots. Go ahead. Coach, how long after you arrived here did you realize that Juwan could be the player that he is? Had, had, had you previously gotten a chance to see him play before you arrived here, and just how long before you realized how good he could be? Uh, just individual workouts through our first uh, early part of the spring and then getting into the summer, kind of seeing how he played and, and uh, watching him, uh, you know, from an inside-outside type of a player. Um, you know, as we progressed last year and our team changed and went from big to a little bit smaller, then I think you got to see him start to take advantage of his mobility and whatnot. And, you know, he can play with a big, he can play without a big. I mean, he can pretty much handle himself the entire game uh, without any problems. Um, but his versatility and how he approaches things, you can pretty much tell he was really developing late last year with his uh, incredible Big Ten season. And then, you know, worked hard this summer and then moved into this year's team and he's taking a leadership role. And he is not greedy by any stretch. He hasn't had one stretch of the season where he's complained about, I'm like shooting, I'm like this. He just plays. And, uh, you know, it's good to see. He's getting, he's getting as much done as any player in college basketball for our team. Coach, Al Durham with the career high tonight. Can you talk about his development as a perimeter shooter over the last year? I mean, he's just worked really hard on it. Uh, he's a stronger player. 
he's more confident. He's a, he's a year older. Uh, but Al really loves the game. He works on it. I mean, he's, he's the guy that's in before practice, after practice, after shoot around. He spends a ton of time, and it's good to see him get rewarded. He had a, a really, really uh, kind of a little slow stretch there for a while where he wasn't hitting, but he played right through it. And had a terrific workout <laughs> yesterday before practice, one of his better practices. And, and he showed, he played, he played nice tonight. I mean, he really didn't force anything. He was able to really, in my opinion, take good shots. A lot of them were assisted, which is good to see. But Al, Al earned the right to play, play well tonight. He's worked hard. Al, this break you guys have coming up, is there anything specifically as a staff that you're kind of looking to get accomplished with the kind of the extra practice time that you'll have? Yeah, I mean, obviously we have, we have a chance to tie some things up. I mean, uh, we, we have to get a lot better offensively, as we've stated here in the last couple of weeks, taking care of the ball. You know you're going to see a lot of different styles in the Big Ten, and uh, one of the things you have to do is make sure that you get a good shot and you're not turning it over. So we're going to obviously look at some things offensively where we can you know, tidy it up or clean it up. You know, defensively we've got to keep getting better. You know, hopefully, you know, we get two of our best perimeter defenders back at some point in time. You know, that will help our cause there, not having to play as many minutes. But you know, defensively, I think we're going to have to take it to another level. Um, you know, as we get ready to get into the Big Ten. And, uh, you know, that, as you kind of, I think every coach in the league would be lying if they didn't tell you, boy, you better strap it on here coming out in the next couple of weeks because once it gets started, I mean, every team that you play, in my opinion, has a chance to either win the league or make a Sweet 16. I mean, you're looking at top 5, 10, 15, 20 teams, and, um, and you know, it's, it's going to be difficult. So uh, I think we just got to take our time here after break, take it one day at a time, hopefully cross our fingers and get healthy. And uh, as we enter league play, just – one tank, one day at a time. I know you kind of said you aren't where you want to be offensively, but talking about Jawan's unselfishness, for a guy who scored so many points and, and played kind of the role that he did last year, how important has that been this year as you've had to ad adapt in a lot of new guys and new pieces at that end of the floor? He's just coachable. I mean, he's trying to do what we ask him to do, and he knows when you play in the, in the thick of it, I mean, he's going to have to make more plays and try to attempt more shots. But he goes out of his way to play the right way, um, you know, and, and, and you know, to me, he doesn't really care how many points he scores. I think Juwan's looking at the big picture, saying this is my last go. I want to have the best possible season I can. I want to be remembered for a heck of a run as a senior. You know, and a good two-year run with us. You know, he's kind of changed the complexion of not only his own game and his own reputation, but you know, he's had an opportunity to have a real big imprint on this group. And uh, you know, he just—he's a coachable guy. Um, plays the right way. Good things are going to come to him. Yeah, Coach Devante didn't shoot the ball quite like he did the other night, but. Played 35 minutes, five assists, two steals, just two turnovers. He's got a plus minus of 30 to match to one. How did you think he handled the extra minutes and stuff tonight? I thought he made good plays. I mean, he was very aggressive. He got downhill quite a bit off the ball screens, which we encouraged him to do. Um, you're never going to, you know, obviously shooting the ball is one thing. As long as he takes good shots, you know, he's going to have a chance to make them. Um, needing him to be, you know, pretty solid, though, taking care of the ball. So I think he's at 11 assists to three turnovers in his last two games and three steals a game. Um, you know, he's, he's doing a good job. He just to make a couple more shots tonight. You know, obviously his, his line looks looks good, but he had a good week. And, you know, he's, he knows right now that, you know, with Rob being out, you know, he's back in there and he's going to play a lot of minutes. So I think he's playing freedom. You were talking on the radio the other night about guys like Clifton and Jake and Demise. He were doing good things in practice. It was just a matter of getting them, you know, finding them, uh, you know, some minutes in games. How valuable was this week to, to maybe get them some confidence and, and maybe let them see a payoff to some of the things they're doing behind the scenes? I mean, you always want guys to, you know, work hard every day to have an opportunity to contribute, and those guys have been hungry to do so, and all three of them had opportunities this week to do it. And, you know, Denise, he's going to be real vital here moving forward with our perimeter group and where he's going to be able to make less mistakes and, and take great shots. And when, you, when he does take great shots, be another guy that can, you know, stretch the floor for us. Uh, the other two guys got to keep hanging in there. You never know with injuries and fouls who's going to get their number called. And, you know, I suspect that we're going to be in some real dog fights in the next couple of months. It's going to require our bench to go deeper. So we'll keep trying to develop them, and they just got to stay with it. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you.